guys, Deadly Tarantula Girl with Russ Gurley. We are vending at the OKC Elite. Uh, Russ has got his hands in a lot of projects. He's a major player in the field. He's very into conservation. He's gone through a lot of phases in his life. Tell me about some of the different animals that you've been involved with. Uh, well, I started out uh, in the 80s with colubrid snakes and, and uh, lizards, a lot of geckos. I uh, moved to California in the late 80s and hooked up with Philippe de Vaugelay and some of those guys out there and so that's where I kind of uh, expanded a little bit into amphibians and invertebrates. I went to um, to Northern Ireland in uh, the, the 80s and saw a lot of guys raising uh, tarantulas as pets and there were very few tarantulas in the hobby uh, back then. Um, a lot of mainly Haitian browns and pink toes and things like that. So I started reporting some spiders in, into the hobby uh, in the early 90s and wrote a couple of books in those days because there wasn't much around in those Several times. books, which are kind of the Bible <laughs> to a lot of hobbyists these days. Thank you. Go on. Um, so anyway, uh, and then probably about 10 years ago, I, I really started focusing on uh, tr uh, turtles and tortoises. And that, that's probably what I'm known for more these days. We, I have a nonprofit uh, conservation group called the Turtle and Tortoise Preservation Group. And we're a nonprofit group. We have a, a really great board of, of directors of uh, turtle breeders from all over the country. Uh, we put on a conference in Mesa, Arizona every uh, November, second week in November. This will be our fifth annual this year, so we're cruising along. I still have a, I still have a, a lot of snakes. I have a lot of lizards. Uh, even though my main focus is turtles and tortoises, I, I, I still have a, a too many interests probably. Uh, uh, I, I have a small publishing company called Living Art Publishing that I uh, try to put out a, a really good turtle and tortoise book uh, once a year. Uh, uh, yeah, all that keeps me busy. Awesome. Yeah. Now, us is one of the, I hate to say old timers, but what I mean by that is like original big names in the hobby. I know that you've run with some of the big dogs through the years. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about some of that stuff. Well, you know, yeah, I've had a lot of great friendships. When, yes. I, when I moved to California, I met up with Philippe de Beaujolais, who I, I consider kind of the, the, the guy who started all of this. He was the first guy to captive breed a, a lot of frogs and, and is really into naturalistic setups, which has kind of always been one of my passions too. And he's still one of my mentors today. I talk to him as often as I can. Another another great guy was uh, Bert Langerwerf, who was uh, from Holland and, and set up a lizard farm in, in Alabama. Unfortunately, he passed away about uh, five or six years ago. Uh, but he was a, a, a great mentor to me, and, and uh, yeah, I've been really lucky to have a, have a, a lot of good friends in, in the hobby and, that have inspired me, and hopefully I can do the same someday. Yeah. Russ is very knowledgeable. He uh, definitely does his research on all this stuff, but the thing is, he has lived this. A lot of this uh, knowledge and education that he's documenting, this is coming from personal experience. He's got a wealth of knowledge from himself and other big players in the field. So if you ever see a book authored by Russ Gurley, I personally endorse it. It's good, good material. It's uh, simple, easy to read, matter of fact, and sometimes a little bit funny. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, so, a, a lot of, I think a lot of, I wouldn't say a lot, but there, there's, there's some, uh, book companies that were really trying to put a lot of reptile books out uh, really fast and uh -huh. so they would hire writers rather than keepers and that's what right. I do with my with my books that I publish too is I try to find the guys that are really the best in in that area and even if they're not writers I work with them and try to get the, the, the material because to me the material and, the, and the, the knowledge and the information is more important than than a real eloquent writer you know exactly. a professional writer and, it's happened a lot, not just in our hobby, but birds and everything else, where they hire a, a, a professional writer to interview people and then they'll put out a book and maybe they've never kept the animal and they've certainly never bred them. Or it becomes very commercialized. This is just a few of his books that I own. Uh, these are original editions, some of them, that I've purchased in the 90s. And he's been writing and researching and documenting some of his knowledge and techniques. 
uh, for a, quite a while now. Now, Dave and Tracy Parker published a book with your assistance talking about there are a lot of organizations that are really frowning upon exotics in captivity. I'd like to hear your, your viewpoint and kind of the foundation of that book. Okay. If you can possibly summarize yeah, yeah. it, I know it's... I yeah, Dave and Tracy are the eloquent ones. They're the ones you want to get to talk about this incredible new book. It's called The Invisible Ark, and it's it's the first book I think that's ever been written to give people a look at... Uh, we, we people that keep animals in captivity. Uh, I think a lot of people out in the general public and, and, and unfortunately politicians and others think that we're, you know, all a bunch of nuts that keep chimpanzees in our spare bedrooms or, you know, or, or tigers in our living rooms. And it's, most of us are, are doing this. Uh, we're raising these exotic animals to take pressure off of uh, wild populations. If, if, if we produce these animals in captivity and supply them as pets uh, to other, other hobbyists, then the need to go out and, and pull these tarantulas out of the rainforest in Peru and to pull these snakes out of, uh, you know, uh, habitats. Habitat. Yeah, then we're taking that pressure off of these wild populations. And a lot of people don't, they just see us as making money off of, of, of live animals. And right. it, it, there's so much more to it. It's obviously a very complicated issue. But, uh, and Dave and Tracy's new book is the first one that is trying to kind of explain to the general public and politicians that are making rules against animal uh, keeping animals um, that it actually does benefit. Uh, some species have benefited greatly uh, from from being in captivity. Uh, they've saved endangered antelope and we've saved endangered tortoises from Madagascar and all of these other species that we're producing in captivity. Uh, and, and their book is, is even more in depth. It, it's, it's about a connection with nature. It's about uh, uh, the lady that goes to Home Depot and buys an orchid and puts it on her windowsill in her kitchen. She, she's part of the invisible art. She's part of the, this group that keep tropical fish and birds and plants. Uh, because we want some connection to the natural world, um, and, and some people don't understand that. You know, some people uh, don't understand why people are passionate about animals or tarantulas or scorpions or snakes. They, uh, and hopefully, this book will help explain why it is important and, and why we love it so much. Right. Uh, so I just want to throw one thing out there. We're we're talking about all types of exotics, invertebrates, reptiles, mammals. First of all, if we don't preserve the, this world for all of the life forms, no one is. Humans are actually the most dangerous and toxic animals on this earth. We're the ones that the world needs to be watching out for. And the reality is, due to humans and the destruction of this earth, some of these animals aren't going to have a place to live in captivity. So sometimes these people that are producing them in captivity are actually going to wind up preserving the entire species, which is sad, it's unfortunate, but it's a reality. Yeah. My uh, turtle and tortoise preservation group, we have, we have nine species of turtle, aquatic turtle, uh, in captivity and we produce babies every year and they're extinct in nature. They were originally found in China and Vietnam. They're a species that have been uh, mostly eaten, uh, eaten or used for folk medicine and they're actually extinct in nature. They haven't been seen in many, many years. So we're, we're lucky that somebody had the foresight to set some of these turtles up in breeding populations. And like I said, some of them we produce over a hundred babies a year, these captive hatch little healthy babies of a species that's no longer found in nature. So That's amazing. And, and, and there are guys doing it with birds and with uh, you know tortoises and mammals and uh, you know, everything else. Uh, it so, just happens to be our little, our little niche where right. we're trying to help. So this is a really important issue, something that a lot of the general population is basically unaware of. We've got legislators that are trying to ban all these animals and the keeping of these animals. And there's a whole nother very important aspect to the hobby. And so um, Russ is one of these guys that's trying to, number one, help preserve the species, but also inform the public. So big deal, you're, you're a big guy. Thanks. In my book. Thanks a lot. So this is Russ Gurley and we're signing off. Deadly Tarantula Girl, the OKC Elite. See you guys soon.